are just boarding the ship. This is from Cabana's. I'm gonna bite this, but probably that will be enough. I've got some shrimp, peel and eat shrimp. One chicken tender. I couldn't stop myself from getting this focaccia bread, which I've already nibbled on. A piece of cornbread, some snap peas, and then a little bit of this like penne with goat cheese. I got yellow in this. Callie's really getting into it with multiple desserts and a salad. So, oh, she's got some mac and cheese over there too. That's her plate. But a lot of selection. Oh my gosh. Look at her face. Have you already started nibbling chocolate? Oh, ew, don't eat that off the table. And we're done. All right, Mark did bring me a caprese sandwich. Callie had half of it. I ate all my shrimps, ate all my chicken, some cornbread, had a bite of this, had some of these, had a bite of this. This was not for me. Did not eat more of that. Feeling quite full, but also happy with my choices in a non-gluttonous way. I'm so sorry for coming to you in a bedraggled state every time I try to vlog, but to be honest, on vacation, I'm not really like getting ready, obviously for filming. Like this is very much what I looked like out at the pool deck just a few moments ago, but I was planning on eating my lemon macaron from, I think it's called Sweet On You. I keep calling it sweet to me. There is the cutest little sweet shop here. And if I haven't shared, I've had ice cream from there. Yesterday I had a full scoop of strawberry ice cream, which was delectable. Callie had a mango sorbet, so good. So it seems like I want to try every single thing in this case. Like it's so aesthetically cute inside, but I got a lemon cookie and I wanted to eat it with you. If you wanna know everything that we did today and why I look this bedraggled, it was like one of the best days of summer. Make sure to check that video out. This is what the cookie looks like. I'm not sure why it's two colors, but it is very cute. Mm. I love anything lemon. This is good. It's not as good as the French bakery that we have in town. Like it's not lemony enough for me. But I appreciate being able to buy one single macaron. Mm. That's gonna hit the spot until dinner tonight. Speaking of which, I have come back to the room a bit early because we are having dinner at Remy tonight and I'm gonna bring you with me. I need to charge my battery before we go. But I have to do the whole hair wash thing, so I need a little bit of time, but I'm very excited. Thank you for joining me for my afternoon snack. I'm trying to find like a quiet spot to film because one of the downsides of any type of stateroom, unless you get a villa on a cruise, is that they are small. So Callie's watching TV, Mark's shaving, running the shower to steam clothes. FYI, you should bring a steamer with you because there aren't irons on board. And if you want, oh God, there's people coming. That's so awkward. If you don't want your clothes to be wrinkly, you will definitely want to bring like a handheld steamer. We are about to go to Remy for dinner, which is one of the adults only experiences on board. I'm gonna show you everything. All I know is that it's fancy and expensive. Um, I'm waiting a few minutes to like shake my curls out because it's so humid outside. If we have to go outside, I'm worried that they'll fall. But I do wanna show you my outfit of the evening. One of these style shows is frozen. A musical spectacular. Another show time.
not sure if I'm going to have to film this part of the video in multiple clips, but I experienced what could possibly be the best meal of my life last night at Remy, which is an adults only dining experience. It's a luxury. This is not a budget experience here aboard the Fantasy. It is themed themed after Ratatouille. There is a French menu and an American menu as well as an a la carte option, but the idea is that it's a tasting menu. So you go through like six plus courses throughout a two to three hour journey of culinary arts and expertise. You know it's fancy when the first thing you receive is a water menu. <laughs> So the way that I love champagne is the way that Mark loves sparkling water. So when our amazing server team came over, the first question was, how strong do you want your bubbles? And on a scale of like flat to incredibly strong bubbles, Mark went with a strong bubble. We didn't actually look at the water menu. Our server said, do you trust me? And Mark said, yes in a true Aladdin sense. And we started, I'm looking at the menu on my phone, with the Fiuji, Fiugi. It's an Italian water and it is super bubbly. It was delicious though I could only drink about this much of it because the bubbles then fill my tummy. We did end up getting a second bottle. This one was from Spain and it was the Vichy Catalan. And I did like this water, but I was on a whole separate plane of excitement and joy, which we'll get to, Mark said he liked the Italian water better. So before the meal is even explained to you, they drop off what they call a surprise from the chef. There are four of these little tiny cups, which are flatbreads on the table. One was a foie gras on the right hand side of what you're seeing. And on the left hand side, honestly, I don't know what was in it, except it had a strong cheese. So the chef recommended starting with the foie gras, working your way to the cheese. I'm sorry if you can hear Callie brushing her teeth in the bathroom. I ate half of my little foie gras circle. I'm not sure I love foie gras. And then I ate the other one, which was delicious and had that strong, good like Alps Swiss cheese flavor on top but was nice because it wasn't 600 degrees when I was trying to eat it. Then they bring out the butter service. So there are three types of butter. This butter is imported. It is melted down, reformed, and then given a flavor. So there's like a spicy, spicy butter, but it has the regular butter running through the middle, the regular one, and then a nori seaweed butter. I didn't love that one, but what I loved most about this homemade sourdough bread experience was the fleur de fleur de sel. The salt was like hand scraped where you get salt from France and only the top layer. You get the tiniest bit and you just put that on top of the butter. I didn't end up eating my whole piece of bread because we had so many flavors to come, but it was delicious. The spicy butter would have been enough to seal the deal for the whole night, but that was just the start. And then you get an amuse-bouche on top of that. After your bread service, you get an amuse-bouche, which translates to like happy mouth. Um, basically it's to like, he said, excite your palate before your courses begin. So I wish I could explain to you, it's not on the dining menu because I think this changes all the time, but it was like a Parmesan crisp on top of this like creamy green, fresh. It's not even a soup. It was delightful. And he said, take the spoon, break through the Parmesan crisp, like get all of those tastes into one bite. And I ate a few spoonfuls of this. It was delightful. It was super light. It was fresh. It tasted like it had like a ginger in it, which I love. So that's how we started. And then the menu gets explained to you. One side is a tasting menu that's French inspired and that has a French chef. One side is an American inspired menu and that has an American chef who actually came from Walt Disney World. And then there's like a pastry chef, there's a sommelier, they have all kinds of like specialty chefs for their dishes. I went with the French menu because I feel like in a French restaurant, that is the appropriate thing to do. The chef's name is Arnaud Lamont. 
look at that French. And in addition to this, I also chose to go on the Champagne Journey. The Champagne Journey is an extra $160 per person. Mark chose to stick with sparkling water. He also got a really special Pinot Noir. We'll get to that. But the Champagne Journey is a total of five glasses of wine. They're two ounce pours and each pour is designed to go with the taste of whatever course you're on. So we started with like a light, super light and bubbly, worked our way into like the heavier Krug champagnes. And then we ended with a Moet and Chandon rosé champagne that is meant to be poured over ice. So I did film clips of the champagne because these courses come really slowly. I was able to drink every ounce of champagne. You also begin this experience with a champagne cocktail, which, and that's for everyone, not just the champagne journey. They like welcome you into Remy with a champagne cocktail that I was convinced I wasn't going to like because it has cognac and vodka, then a champagne on top with a little bit of magic like sparkle. It's not dust. It's like something that goes inside the champagne to make it extra fizzy. Both Mark and I were like, this is delicious. So good. So I had six glasses of champagne, some shared with Mark, so I didn't consume all of them. And... I stayed hydrated, I ate in between, we were there for three hours. It's definitely more wine than I'm used to consuming, but also the quality of this champagne, like there was a Dom Perignon, again we had Krug, we had Moet and Chandon, like the quality of this champagne coming from France and having a sommelier explain the grapes where this was coming from in certain vineyards, amazing amazing if you are a champagne lover there is also like a wine experience but i'm not a red wine drinker so i feel like that would have been wasted on me so my official first course was called a langoustine which is french for lobster this was a norwegian lobster and it was like two small lobster tails in a beurre blanc sauce the sauce was outrageous i actually used some of my sourdough to like soak up the sauce and eat it and i didn't know if that was tacky or not and then our server was like how very french of you and i was like mm. I'm doing it. This was incredible. I could have just done with one. I did eat one lobster tail. And when you think lobster tail, don't think like North Atlantic lobster that are this big. Like this little guy was, the little tail was this big. And it was so flavorful. It was the least fishy lobster I've ever had. Mark took a bite of it, said it was delicious, but he got the American menu, which I did not record. And his first course was actually like, a variety of different types of tomatoes and he said they were amazing. My second course, I'm gonna give you the French name and then explain what it was. Betterave de plein terre. These were beets. I am not a beet person. I immediately thought of Dwight from The Office. <laughs> I'm not like a beetroot kind of girl, but the sauce that was in this and the way these were cooked, there were like three or four little kind of like baby ice cream scoops, if you will, like a tiny tablespoon scoop of beets with this incredible sauce that was white. Um, I wish I could tell you what was in it. I can't. It doesn't matter. I ate one little beet circle. It was lovely. I did not finish the rest. And the server did ask, is everything okay with your food? So I, he, our lovely server was from Italy and I know, I did tell him, I have had weight loss surgery so I can only take small bites of each thing and he kind of laughed, like he did not know what that was. <laughs> but I thought I would share because I didn't want him to feel like insulted that I wasn't eating everything. Like the portion sizes were definitely small compared to American standards, but were big enough that I wasn't finishing everything because I would have been full by the official first course if I had eaten a whole piece of bread, my entire amuse-bouche, both of the little surprises of flatbreads. Like I would have been full right away and I was trying to like balance drinking champagne at the same time. So I was taking smaller bites of things and those bites were 
the best I've ever had. Up next was actually something I did not love at Remy. It was the Sole Plein Mare. It was basically a piece of white sole fish that was cooked, they said en planche, like basically on a wood, like a grilled wood situation. And it had this tiny little like crisp avocado stack next to it that I really liked. This was just too fishy for me and I get it's fish. I get it's fish. But usually white fish doesn't taste fishy. Mark had a tooth fish as a part of his meal, his American menu, and he said that was amazing. So this was cooked beautifully. I just didn't personally like the flavor, which was okay. And for the main course of this experience, I had the Polard La Belle Rouge. This was chicken and it was so moist and so tender. I honestly wish there was a smaller portion of this because the chicken piece they gave me was like, like this big, which is kind of like the max, right? For my belly at one time. So this was delicious. Mark on the American menu got the Wagyu beef. And on top of this, they were offering a two ounce A5 Wagyu. One was from Colorado. According to his menu, he got, had the Colorado one built in from a farm. And then the other additional piece, which was an additional $70, came from Japan. And he said this was like the best thing he's ever eaten. So with that additional piece of Wagyu, he had a pour of the Pinot Noir, the Skywalker Pinot Noir, which is a George Lucas vineyard. And apparently that wine is very expensive by the glass so it kind of like makes up i mean in my head that's math where it makes up for the cost of the wagyu but he said and it came with like an au gratin potato he was the happiest he was like this is amazing this experience is worth it even when we got the bill his he still felt that way I ended my meal with the framboise which is the french word for raspberry so this actually came with two plates it was like fresh raspberries on the bottom with a little bit of like creme fraiche, a raspberry salted sugar that looked like the shape of a Michelin star. And then on the right hand side was like raspberry, I want to say ice cream, but it was more like gelato-y um, with the most beautiful like sugar on top. That was the ending of mine. Mark had chocolate. Plus on top of that, they send you, they like bring to the table um, these little chocolate bonbons that say Remy on the bottom. They're gold dusted. He called them raspberry fruit roll-ups. These little like fruit strips plus this little tart. And then when you leave, they give you a red rose, chocolates to take home. Oh my gosh, look how beautiful. These look... I wish you could just buy these in the stores. I don't want them to fall out. This is definitely that raspberry candy. These look like gems. These are gorgeous comes in this little box lollipops homemade lollipops like they give you a full dessert to go kit plus we didn't finish our little desserts so I was like how do I take these away and they brought me this little plate so I could bring some for Callie to enjoy which clearly she already has say Remy on the bottom we sat by the window watching the sunset and the ocean pass. Yes, this was an investment dinner. We knew that going into it, that I was going to want the champagne journey, the little extra steak bits on the side were an impromptu splurge for Mark. But these are the types of like experiences that we seek out. When we're talking about like a food centric vacation, Yes, sure, there's a buffet here quite literally all the time, and it's quite good. We have dinner plans every night. We are going on to islands to eat lunch. But when we're talking about food centric, these are the types of experiences that I'm looking for. Like this, this is the new way that we do like long leisurely dinners. It has to be small portions. So there's another restaurant aboard called Palo, which I don't think we can get reservations for now, but they do a brunch and it's Italian themed. So if we ever sail on a Disney cruise again, this is definitely something we would recreate because we would assume that the menus would probably be different by then. Everything is fresh, it's imported, it's special. If you're looking for a truly special dinner, even if you're post-op, I would recommend this. However, if you're under two years post-op, your tummy is not ready 
for this. And I was telling Mark that last night that I couldn't have done this. I could have done this last year when we cruised for the first time after my surgery, but I could not have done this two years ago, three years ago. My stomach wouldn't have been ready and the cost of the dinner would have seemed like it was being wasted on me. If the cost doesn't matter to you, do this. The food is incredibly high quality, but just as a word of like, when would this be good? When you can eat five ounces at a time, at least spread out over time. So that was our Remy experience. It was amazing, delightful. My stomach didn't hurt afterwards. I didn't feel intoxicated. I stayed hydrated through the delicious bubbly water. They have still water as well. We picked Callie up after the Oceaneers Club, shared some desserts, and came home and went to bed. So as long as you know what you're getting into with the amount of courses, you don't have to do any alcohol if you don't want to, and make sure you look up the cost prior to going. But I wanted to share that with you because I feel like that's one of those things like, is this going to be worth it post-op? It kind of depends where you are post-op and what kinds of foods you're looking for. Good morning from breakfast with my little doodles. We are up kind of late today because there was a time change forward. So my watch still says it's 9.03, but it's actually 10.03. And we're just having breakfast from Cabanas. We tried to eat on the 12th floor deck. It was so windy that basically everything blew off our plates. Oh, my roll fell off, so this is not trash. Yeah, a roll and then- My olive oil spilled everywhere. Yeah, okay. these are the things. So now we're back on deck 11. We could be eating inside, but it's actually not too hot out here today. I wanted to show you what my typical, hello. Is that gonna switch? Hello. <laughs> I wanted to show you what my typical breakfast has been looking like. Today they have a special waffle. This is a Mickey churro waffle. So I'm gonna try a few bites of that. I'm excited. This is a veggie mix scrambled egg. I have two pieces of turkey bacon and then my indulgence on this trip has been buttered toast because I love that and it reminds me of Christmas. So yeah. Uncle Johnny used to make it on Christmas morning when we had breakfast at my Nana's house. So I'm gonna eat this. Callie has a full spread going on over here. She loves a buffet. Behind me, I'm just a little messy over there. <laughs> so I'll show you what I'm able to eat of this. <laughs> and in about 25 minutes, this is the finished product. This churro waffle was fluffy and awesome, and I actually like it more than I like churros. I ate a piece and a half of the turkey bacon, a few bites of the veggie scrambled eggs. The best bites were the ones with veggies in them. And then my whole toast, which was delightful. And I'm gonna wait about 15 minutes and then start drinking some water because I am for sure dehydrated, though doing a much better job on this trip with staying hydrated. Thank you.